Is the world of ideas a fair place? That is the question that I am asking. Hey, what's up? It's Phoenix, and welcome back to my channel. I'm super stoked because today I'm going to talk about the notion of the marketplace of ideas and how that relates to my own philosophical view of the world. So without further ado, let's dive right in. Now, I will admit, I have been struggling lately. I have this ideal, this ideal of a marketplace of ideas, a place where ideas can compete against each other and where the best idea will win out, where I believe that all ideas, even ideas that we don't like, have a fair chance of being able to be discussed, debated, and made transparent in the world of discourse. And the idea is that every idea can be presented. That in this marketplace of ideas, which is using the metaphor of the free market, as we see in our economic systems today, that it's fair game. It is the best ideas that can compete and that can compare themselves and we can see at the end of the day what we really believe, what is fair to believe, and what is important to acknowledge as what we actually care about and believe. But I've been thinking lately about how maybe that ideal, as ideal as it is, has been kind of a mistake because I think that it's literally made it to where I've misinterpreted what's going on in the world through that lens and or I've missed out on the very difficult truth that ideas are also vicious and that people can be vicious and that the world is not always a fair place. And so to say that every idea would have a fair chance does not seem to be very common in a lot of ways. That it isn't true that ideas will have a fair chance. Now this marketplace of ideas has come from writers as diverse as John Milton who wrote a philosophical work about these ideas of the marketplace. But you also see it in John Stuart Mill, who had this very specific idea that the best ideas will win out, and that all ideas need to be represented and expressed if they are to have a fair chance at being critiqued or rejected, and that we have to allow ideas that we don't like to enter the realm of discourse. But I realize the ways in which maybe that is too much of an ideal. In my experience of the world, I've often seen ideas as being very brutal sometimes, that it is a battle. So I see this a lot, for example, in politics. If you're watching a segment on the news, they don't necessarily have an invested interest or even incentive to talk about the truth. They don't have a reason to present ideas that focus on this understanding of truth and of what is actually true and what really matters. There are so many different incentives, such as money, such as political control. And the reason why I bring that up as an example is because if you're watching a news segment, you're not necessarily watching it thinking that you're going to get something genuine or authentic, that you're going to see a fair shot at what is actually true. And this is something that I've been thinking about a lot because I think that it is very much a problem that we're seeing a lot of these kind of sound bites that are corruptive, I think, in a lot of ways because they don't tell the truth. But the thing that I've realized is that that's not the point. If you're being criticized by, a, a, you could describe a religious person who is very critical of certain beliefs, the idea isn't to discuss it. The idea is to instead actually be convinced of something that you may not actually believe in. And this is the thing that I've realized is that in my view and in my experience in life, I have interpreted and internalized a lot of beliefs that aren't even mine. And this is kind of what I mean by my ideal of the marketplace of ideas as maybe being a little bit problematic. Again, to use that example of the news segment, the truth doesn't matter. If you're trying to, if someone's trying to convert you to a certain religion, your view and perspective of that, of that view doesn't matter. And this is part of the difficulty of thinking about these things, is that there are a lot of situations, such as in politics, where they're not worried about the truth, they're worried about other things, such as, as kind of 
converting you, so to speak, into a certain viewpoint, that's what they care about. And so here's the thing. I don't want to lose my understanding of what I believe to be true. And I don't want to lose this ideal of the marketplace of ideas. But I have to confess that I really struggled having to realize that the marketplace of ideas doesn't exist. It's not fair. I don't think there is this arbitration of ideas that is existing on high or in our best understanding of the world and our best, you know, description of the world is actually playing out. I do instead have lately had to realize that it is a battlefield of ideas, that it is very competitive and that it is very difficult to come up with a way to be able to let the good ideas win and to be able to get to the truth whenever we are all sorts of motives. And I'm not going to make a claim about human nature necessarily because I don't want to be too cynical and assume that people don't have good intentions when expressing their ideas. But it's very difficult for me, I have to admit, to realize that it is a battlefield of ideas. Now part of the reason why I tend to see the marketplace of ideas as being such a salient idea is because I experience the world through writing and through arguments and through reason. And so I have had to realize that a lot of these processes are not logical, but I nonetheless have acknowledged that that's part of my ideal, is I want the logical explication of ideas. I want us to be able to communicate things fairly to each other in good faith in order to come to the truth. And so that is, you know, when I'm reading a book, I might be reading a book that I don't even like all that much, or I might be listening to a speaker where I don't even like their ideas, or I might listen to a song that I don't even really like all that much. And that is my understanding of things, is that the world, I wish, would focus more on this free communication of ideas, this fair discourse, this way of communicating ideas that we can actually relate to and that we actually believe to be true, instead of just being told what we need to believe, being manipulated in a variety of ways to believe certain things. And I'll admit, this is why I struggle, because I do think that while it is respectable to have the view that the good ideas, that the best ideas should be presented and that we should care very much about the search for truth, it seems to me that there are, again, all sorts of motives in how we do things, that the process is not always logical, and that sometimes it is a very messy process. There are all sorts of hierarchies and ways of viewing the world, this way in which we stratify groups and societies and individuals, and part of the issue is that we do stratify these things. So a person with more economic clout, such as more capital or resources, might be able to have more sway in the media, for example. They'll have more power there if they have those resources. And so my point is to say that I don't want to lose sight of the importance of this view of having this ideal where I would like to believe that it is all fair game and that we should be able to discuss things in an honest and good faith way. But I also realize that sometimes the truth isn't what matters to people. And so what does this mean for me? Well, I've had to really think about that. I think what it means is I will continue to present my ideas in the best way that I can, regardless of whether people even like them or find them useful. And I will continue to engage with ideas that I don't like and that I want to struggle with because I'm trying to get at the truth. But I think what's important to keep in mind is that, I don't know, I've, I've really had to think about it. I feel like I want to communicate these ideas nonetheless. I want it to try to be a marketplace of ideas. And while other people may not view it that way at all, I still nonetheless want to do my best to arbitrate between some of the best ideas and to be able to come up with my own marketplace where I'm able to communicate things that are very true to me and that I hope that people can relate to in some way. And so it takes a lot of, I would say, humility to get to that point to where you realize that it might just be difficult to communicate ideas whenever they're not necessarily understood, received, or appreciated. And it's the same for me, that I very much want to try to be empathetic to a variety of different viewpoints and different experiences that people may have. But I've also had to realize that some people may not view it that way at all, as the marketplace of ideas as being a legitimate thing, that there isn't always equal playing ground. And so in that way, I just kind of have to be humble and accept that a lot of it, a lot of what, a lot of how discourse happens in the world may just not really be fair. It may be this very difficult thing where there is a lot of competition and fighting, and competition itself isn't bad, but there might be a lot of more heavy-handed approaches, there might be a lot more manipulations. 
because I've had to accept that this is reality. America may be built on a lot of these notions of kind of this equality of ideas and this fairness and this discussion and this open, honest discourse. But if we look at the way governments work in other countries, we see that sometimes it is totally problematic. It can become authoritarian. It can be the situation where it's not about fair ideas. It's not about open discourse or being transparent. It's not about this marketplace. It is instead this forced control. And I do think that whether I like it or not, that is a possible, that is a possible tendency of people to go towards those, I think, more destructive impulses to be able to control an idea and to control a certain way of looking at the world and certain viewpoints, as well as rejecting viewpoints that people don't like. But that's what I've had to realize, that other countries are a good example of the ideas and the marketplace of ideas as going wrong, where it is about control. It is about power. And as I've said, I've seen this in politics, I've seen this in other fields as well, in other ways of thinking, such as in religion, but even in institutions, you know, so it is very possible to say that a lot of institutions that might come across as being more neutral, such as education, for instance, where they might, or the news too, for example, where it is still nonetheless a very complicated thing, that people are far less motivated to try to find the truth and to be curious and to try to see what's really going on in the world, and they will just kind of cave into this desire for political power and control. And there is no doubt that the ideas that we present and that we believe and that we are manipulated to believe have huge effects on our lives. I'm Phoenix. I know that this was a little bit of a darker talk, but I was really thinking about it in terms of the freedom of the press and the freedom of ideas and the freedom of expression and really thinking about these things. And it's a very tough thing to try to navigate, but that's what I wanted to do with this video. So I hope that you enjoyed it. I hope that you'll check out some of my other videos and I thank you for stopping by. I'm Phoenix, thank you for watching, and I will see you next time.